Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's online service for Hope Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Enderly. I am so thankful that you are joining me in this time together. I pray that you will be strengthened, encouraged, and built up through the Word and equipped in a life of service to our incredible God. Let's do our service, all right? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and will be forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. is the world's light Christ and none other born in our darkness he became our brother if we have seen him we have seen the father glory to God on high
God speaks to us in his word, first from the book of Isaiah. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you'll delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me, listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has endowed you with splendor. Paul, Romans 9. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sour and sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs is the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised on men. It is not as though God's word had failed, for not all who are descended from Israel are Israel, nor, because they are his descendants, are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebekah's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet before the twins were born, her had or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls, she was told the older will serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. From the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. And he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. Confess our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. love unknown my savior's love to me love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be oh who am i that for my sake my lord should take frail flesh and die
He came from His blessed throne, salvation to bestow. But such disdain, so few that longed for Christ would know. But oh, my friend, my friend indeed, who at my need his life did spend. Sometimes they strew his way and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day, Hosanna's to their King. Then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst. my Lord done what makes this rage and spite he made the lame to run he gave the blind their sight sweet injuries yet they had these themselves displeased and against him right All right, this morning I want to encourage you on the basis of Matthew chapter 14, Jesus feeding the 5,000. And before I get to the text, I want you to think about some significant inventions that have changed and altered the way we think, the way we live, the way we act. Just think about that for a moment. Think about the printing press, along with that, the typewriter. You think about the word processor, and think about the personal computer, and along with that, in the last years or so, the smartphone. You think about the combustion engine, you think about the steam engine, you think about the assembly line. All of these things have changed and altered the way we live, and I think that they've made our lives better. Well, this next invention has been around for about five or six years. It hasn't really taken off in the United States. It's very popular in Japan. It is the amazing, the incredible Fudini. What is the Fudini? The Fudini is a 3D food printer. I'm not making this up. It is a 3D food printer. You buy these little capsules of like food and then it, it prints the food and you eat it. 
and it also cooks it or it bakes it, whatever it's needed. Here's a picture of a vegetable salad with pasta. You know, it, it doesn't look that bad. I'm not too sure I would eat it. I, I'm certainly willing to give it a try though. Uh, the Fudini is very expensive. It's about five to $7,000. So it's not something you're just gonna put in your shopping cart and run out and buy. Uh, this next one though actually looks kind of good. This is a hot uh, toasted cheese sandwich with fresh baked basil bread and uh, a fresh tomato there in the background. Again, it doesn't look that bad. I'm not too sure I'm going to try it though. Well, the reason I bring up this amazing, this incredible Fudini is that it can produce food very quickly and very efficiently and it can produce a lot of it in a short period of time. Well, that's really what Jesus did in the feeding of the 5,000. He produced a lot of food in a short period of time and he fed a lot of people. So before I get to the feeding of the 5,000, this is just a very interesting side point. Uh, there are two miracles that are recorded in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Can you, can you think for a moment what those two miracles might be? The, two the, the two, only two miracles that are recorded in all four Gospels. All right, you think for a moment, you got your answer? The first miracle, you probably got this one, is the resurrection. So the resurrection is recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the second miracle, and this is so interesting, the second miracle is the feeding of the 5,000. Now, what's so interesting about that is we can very easily understand why the resurrection is recorded in all four Gospels. That's the significance of our faith. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection are the sum and substance of our faith. They're the hope that we have. They're the confidence that we have. Everything revolves upon the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But interestingly enough, feeding the feeding of the 5,000, I think, are also very applicable for us in our life. So just as the gospel of Jesus Christ summarized for us achieved in the resurrection, Jesus feeding the 5,000 is an application of what the gospel is going to mean to us in our lives. Because of Christ's life, death, and resurrection, we will be, just like Jesus, filled with compassion and love for other people. So uh, the text begins with these words. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. First of all, that phrase, when Jesus heard what happened, that is a reference to the death of John the baptizer. Uh, John and Jesus' ministry overlapped just briefly. John started his ministry about six months prior to Jesus. John had about a one-year ministry, and then he spent about six months in jail. So after that year and a half that he was, he was around, so to speak, he was put to death by Herod. And Jesus, of course, as the Son of God, knew that this was going to happen. It did not catch him by surprise. He didn't think, oh my goodness, I, I can't believe John got put to death. But what's the significance of this? Jesus withdraws by himself. So Jesus wants to spend some time in personal prayer and devotion and to fortify himself about the significance of John's ministry, but also the significance of his earthly ministry. Jesus is on a trajectory to complete his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, and he knows full well everything that's going to happen. So Jesus withdraws. He says, I need some time by myself. That doesn't happen, though. People flock to him. And what does Jesus do? He has compassion on him. That is a very interesting word in the original. Compassion, it, it conveys the thought of a powerful emotion with visible action. So it's not, just, it's not just feelings. It's not just, oh, Jesus says, I have such compassion on you. 
I'm so filled with sorrow over your physical suffering. It involves that, but it also involves action on the part of Jesus. So Jesus is filled with compassion and he does something about that. And I think that that's one of the reasons, <clears throat> just this phrase right here, that's one of the reasons why the feeding of the 5,000 is in all four Gospels. It's an example for you and for me to be filled with compassion for the lives of others. And of course, the greatest way that we can show people compassion is sharing the hope and confidence that we have in Jesus Christ. But in addition to that, striving to be a light of hope and strength in many times a dark-filled world. So there's all of these people that are gathering around Jesus. He has compassion and he heals them. So why is that so significant, that word heals him? heals them. It's significant because the disciples are seeing Jesus perform miracles. The disciples are seeing Jesus heal the blind and make the lame walk and making the leper clean. And they're seeing it and they're witnessing it. And it's an ongoing action that is occurring. The disciples are standing off in the background, or maybe they're, they're causing the people to form lines that, that they can have access to Jesus, but they're witnessing all of these miraculous things. And it just must have been so interesting to be one of those 12, because when we, when we read the Gospels, Jesus is always light years ahead of the disciples in his thinking and his understanding. So the disciples are seeing all of these miracles, and what do they say? Hey, Jesus, you know, it's like six o'clock. Um, we should send the people away. We should, we should tell them to, uh, you know, catch the bus, uh, get the metro, uh, get on a train or something like that, catch a flight home. It's, it's, it's getting late. Uh, the motels, there's no motels in this area. Jesus, you gotta send them away. And then Jesus says, you give them something to eat. So Jesus puts a little challenge to the disciples. Now, we don't know the mind of Christ, but I believe that, that what Jesus is expecting the disciples to say is, Lord, you have done incredible, miraculous things. We believe that you can do something right here and right now. Yes, Jesus, you have given us the exhortation that we should give something to eat, give them something, and what we're doing, Jesus, is we are coming to you. You are the Son of God. You have control over nature itself. You have been healing all of these people. Jesus, we bow in humble adoration to who you are. What type of miracle can you do for them? And what do they say? Well, we don't have enough food. We don't have, there's nothing we can do, Jesus. Nothing we can do. So what does Jesus say? He says, all right, bring them to me. Jesus acknowledges the lack of faith on the part of the disciples. And he says, you didn't measure up, boys, but I'm still going to do something. And isn't that a beautiful application for us? I'm going to come back to this in the takeaways. But it's a beautiful application for you and for me, is that we should never tire of seeing God's miracles in our own lives and the way that, that God provides for us, and to have eyes open that sees and witnesses the incredible miracles of God in our daily lives. So Jesus says, bring them to me. me. He directs them to the people to sit down, and then specifically, he gave thanks, broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples. The disciples gave to the people. The people ate and were satisfied. So there's four things. He blesses, he divides, he distributes, the people are satisfied. He blesses, he divides, he distributes, and the people are satisfied. Isn't that a beautiful picture for, for us in our lives? Give thanks to God for the blessings that he gives, understanding how God provides for our physical needs, and 
understanding as well that God satisfies first and foremost the hunger of our soul through faith but God also satisfies our physical needs as well it's interesting the word here in the original how the people were satisfied uh, the original conveys the thought of pigs feeding in a trough the people were satisfied the people ate their full that's something that's just common nature for us isn't it we are always satisfied we finish our meal when we are filled not so in the lives of people at jesus day they finished their meal when their food was gone so for for a believer or for a Jew in the days of Jesus to be satisfied with something completely unheard of. They never walked away from the, the kitchen table completely full. They walked away when the food was gone. But Jesus provides for them for their physical needs and they are satisfied. It must have been an incredible feeling. Oh, my belly's full. My belly's full. I have been provided for by God. How great he is. Matthew adds the little uh, uh, add-on at the, at the end here. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 besides women and children. Two takeaways. Jesus meets our needs, ordinary, common, and mundane. Jesus provides for our needs. Jesus provides physically for us. And when we stop and realize the physical blessings that God gives us, that, that's just such a, a powerful reminder for us. Jesus takes, care, Jesus takes care of our needs. He provides for us. Now, does that mean that we have everything we want? Of course not. The Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians reminds us incredible words. He says, I've learned the secret of being content. That's a great line, isn't it? I've learned the secret of being content. What does it mean, the secret? A secret is something that is not known to other people. So Paul says the secret of contentment is the truth to be satisfied with what we have. So many times in our lives, we live them uh, that always, always desiring for our physical needs to always be satisfied. And so we base our, we base our self-worth and we base uh, our, our stature in the world by always having all of these physical needs satisfied, all of this stuff that we have. And we say, I will be satisfied when I get this. I will be satisfied when I get this. I will be satisfied when I achieve that. And the parable or the, the, the story of the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus reminds us that satisfaction ultimately comes from understanding who God is and what God has given us. And realizing as well that God provides for our physical needs. And here's the next one. Jesus' compassion overrules our logical sounding reasons as to why we are too small, too insignificant to matter to God. So because God takes care of our physical needs, we have this incredible comfort that God takes care of our spiritual needs as well. And the greatest spiritual need that we have is forgiveness and life through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came into this world. He lived a perfect life, and God credits that to our account. Jesus died a perfect death, and all of our sins have been paid for. We are made right with God through Christ. And that's just such a vital and important truth for us to remember. I am right with Christ. I am complete in Christ. I am whole in Christ, not on the basis of physical things, not on the basis of what I do and don't do. I am whole and I am complete through Jesus Christ. The feeding of the 5,000 reminds us that Jesus provides for our physical needs, it reminds us as an exhortation to be sensitive to the needs of others. It reminds us to be filled with compassion for other people. But above all, it points us to our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
who provided not just for our physical needs, or who provides not for our physical needs, but for our spiritual needs. And in him we have peace, hope, and forgiveness. In his name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Grant peace, we pray, in mercy, Lord. Peace in our time, O send us. For there is none on earth but you. None other to defend us. You only can fight for us. Amen. Scripture alone we pray, O Lord. Hope in your word, O send us. For there is none on earth but you. None other to be friend us. You only Lord, speak truth to us. Amen. By faith alone we pray, O oh Lord. Faith be your measure, send us. For there is none on earth but you. None other to replenish. You owe me can nourish us. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all things, with gladness we give thanks for all of your goodness. We bless you for the love which you created us and by which you sustain us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, through whom you have made known your will and grace. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the encouraging example of fruits of faith your Spirit produces in the lives of believers, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us treasure in our hearts all that our Lord has done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness with lives that are whole and given to your service. As we pray the prayer that your Son taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Have a good week, everyone. God bless. We hope Pastor's message was meaningful to you. Click the like icon below to share your appreciation. Click the subscribe button below to get notified when the latest online worship service video is uploaded for your viewing pleasure. Thank you for watching. See you next week.